Welcome back everyone to Danganronpa. Last time we learned uh, some interesting tidbits in the class trial. Mainly, Ifumi was definitely one of the accomplices in this murder. And pretty much that was it. So, uh, let's uh, move on from here. But that means he took part in the murders. That he did. I just can't believe it. Well, believe it, girl. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? Yes, that would be nice. There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. Interesting. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Oh, it's probably the piece of paper. Yeah. Yep. I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Yep. Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. <laughs> it, it sounds so wrong to say it like that. What? In his pants? Oh, I knew she would be excited. Mm. Yes, his pants. Oh, boy. Okay, well, forget <laughs> about the pants for now. <laughs> Take a look at what the note says. <laughs> I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else, for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6am. That's the note I was telling you about! The one that told me where to go! Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1am. Because they had to rearrange everything perfectly. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. Yeah. It's not the same? Nope. In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hiro. Yeah, he did. And that person could only have been... <laughs> Fumi's pants. Taka. I got it. That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Basically. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! Overruled! What I don't want? really understand what's going on, but Kifumi had that letter, right? Yeah. Whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! No, I can prove you um, wrong. Just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy <laughs> is Kifumi, right? Ooh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? <laughs> Man, Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. I already know what to prove her wrong with. The gla- What? Hmm. Oh, the broken wristwatch. Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for... Must have been Hubby! No... But remember what the note said. Yeah? What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. Nothing to do with TikTok. Oh, no, no, did not mean to do that. Did not mean to do that. Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Puppy. But remember, what the what time did it? Six a.m. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. No, it's wrong. Break. No. There absolutely is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. Precisely. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. Right. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Right. Which is where Taka was killed. I see. Yeah. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. Yep. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Oh, for sure. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... No further objections! <laughs> <laughs> oh then boy. someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. Hey, it's their... It's, they did technically find a way out, it's just more for their means. But if they gave the note to Taka, 
What was Hifumi doing with it? Obviously wanting to hide the evidence. Took down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Precisely. He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. The crumpled up paper. Yeah. Aha. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. And if you line him up... If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Yeah. Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Are the same. Yup. They're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. That it did. There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip. Yeah, he did. Leaving behind only one small scrap. He should have known better than at that point. You gotta grab every bit of evidence. Did I get all that right? Yeah, you did, girl. That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. That he was. Oh. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. Oh yeah, hands down. In fact, what do you gotta say? He was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive. Okay, now you're just jumping the gun here. And again, we had two murder announcements. Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository. Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. Right. So then, who killed Hifumi? The other killer, obviously. Whoever did is the mastermind. The true killer. Precisely. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. Right. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished. But before we found both bodies in the repository. Right, so it was in between that time. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Basically, so anyone is up for grabs. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Hey, come on, that's mean. Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. It better be something smart here, Yasuhiro. It better be something smart. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the mallets now. A weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. Right. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? That is actually a valid point. So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? This is probably like the smartest thing you said all game, Yasuhiro. Literally the smartest, probably. I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Thank you, Miyake. I agree 100%. Hell yeah. It's packed in there good and tight. I wouldn't say that. He's right, though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. I think maybe these numbered hammers don't even apply, because that that cleaned off hammer, you know, might have been the actual weapon. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. Mm-hmm. Sure, girl. Sure. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? It was number one. Those were accounted for in other rooms, too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Right. Um, then, uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I agree. I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi, the whole picture story in this case won't be completely clear until we figure it out. Somehow to find the truth. Alright. Let's see, what do I got to use? 
Yeah, the spotless hammer, I agree. Like, all the number of hammers, I don't think meant anything. I think it was just to throw us off. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? No. Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Okay. Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out MurderGear.com slash Hammer Time for more info! <laughs> well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! There we go. Hammers. That's no, it. That's wrong. The murder weapon wasn't a Justice Hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. I agree. But, seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Exactly. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. That they were. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Right. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. That's what I feel like too. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, yep. and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. I agree 100%. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma file's note about the wounds being similar. Yeah. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Basically. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Yep. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. Why the would way you say the that? graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. That is true. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? Hmm. We did talk about there wouldn't be any reason that anyone would work together. At least that's what we thought at first. But... What if they were tricked into thinking that they were going to be the ones that were going to graduate? Okay, so I don't think Spyless Hammer... I think I need to scan something. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. True. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. Okay. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Okay. So I'm gonna go. Based over. on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the only the one who actually carried out the act, assuming the rule holds true. No. Yep, that's what I thought. Since there were two murders. It's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. Exactly. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Right. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. True. Sure. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. Pretty much. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. Right, but if Taka was murdered by Hifumi, and then Hifumi was murdered by the true killer, then that would make more sense. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. That's also true. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. Precisely. He made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. It was Instead, two. 
each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. Precisely. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. Exactly. They pretty much just tricked Hifumi all around to commit the first and then to finish him off for the second. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. Precisely. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. Yep. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Oh yeah. That, that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? Well, if they wanted to escape and get the, that money prize, I wouldn't be surprised. You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. Hmm. Jeff made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed the fact from the very beginning, which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing, although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. <laughs> like, it's almost unnatural how good she is at this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! Right. The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit it. Uh, I guess I have to do Hifumi, right? Shoot! Wait, uh... True killer- oh wait. Okay. I'm guess uh, okay, so I'm guessing uh, Celeste. I really think it's her. Here's my answer. It was Celeste. Yeah. Uh, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? I believe it. <laughs> I really do hate this kind of job. I do. I've been really on to you since the beginning of this case, especially with the money. You, the ultimate gambler. A joke. I wonder... So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. I mean, it's really been hinted early on that Hifumi's been wanting to work with you. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him... Oh, she's getting angry. I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain fat, lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Oh boy, we got angry Celeste now. Uh, 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 pardon moi. Girl, <laughs> just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. That you are both victims. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. Yeah. What is the fact that only Hifumi has less in common? Count encountering the suspicious individual. The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Precisely. Shush. The adults are talking now. Uh, what the fuck? Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. But we just said that! Oh, okay. You know what, Biagia, up yours. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? Possibly. After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? Correct. And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? I saw the shuttle. Something moving around at the top of the stairs. We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood curdling scream. Exactly. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. 
I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so we headed further down through the hallway and disappeared. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. Precisely. Yeah. Huh? What was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi, he's in a nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go, go, go back. It was to get us to divide into two groups. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? Pretty much. In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. That she did. Then why don't we split into two groups? I'll leave the hunting party. That seems much more interesting. Very well. Then Makoto and Hina, you come with me to the nurse's office. I will leave the capture of this suspicious individual to Toko, Byakuya, and Sakura. Well... If Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. It really does, honestly. Ooh. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? Definitely. It was your way of telling him, we are on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Yep. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? <laughs> I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. I certainly was not expecting this. I did not imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. Pretty much. I... I don't believe it! Everything... The whole thing was one big act! Pretty much. Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yep. Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Which was the perfect time for Hifumi to leave. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Yep. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Celeste, you're pretty much found out. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> Don't bother trying to deny it. I know, right? It's like, girl, come on. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're all going to die, just like those guys died. Agreed. See, when I knew when she said that, I was like, wait, how did she know that there was two deaths? I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Because she didn't know, we weren't aware that Tak was dead at that time. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Yep. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Yep. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. It means that she didn't... We, she shouldn't have known that Taka was dead. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Yeah, I can say Celeste's comments doesn't make any sense. What is he alluding to? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Monthly file number three. Hmm. Maybe that could be a clue. All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. 
They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Okay, I know this is it, but... And that is all I said. I need to make sure, though. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Okay. Let's uh, do that. All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. Nope. Okay. You know, meaning this was said... Okay. Hmm. All I said was... They must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Oh my god. What, why am I... What am I doing this wrong? Shoot. Uh... All I said was... They must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to... We are going to die. And that is all... And that's all it takes to finish. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Crap. What am I... Ugh... What am I not realizing here with this? All I said was, um, they must really be enjoying things. Trying to think. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. Uh, we are going to die, just like those guys died. Trying to and think. that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? I'm trying to think. I'm really trying to think here. Uh, I think. Like, I don't want... Like, I, I really... All I said was, they must really be en enjoying the sight of us. They must be. We are all going to. We are going to die. And that is. And that's all it takes. What was so Maybe I should absorb Celeste. this, and then. All I said, they must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be. We are all going to die. We are going to die, just like. Oh, thank God. No, okay. Way. Okay. That's right. There's no <sighs> reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. Okay, I knew the reason, I just didn't know how to properly do it. <laughs> when she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Precisely. Girl, you busted. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. Oh. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. Yup. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Hmm. Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Yeah. So what about the picture I took? Mm. How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? Or maybe it was Hifumi dragging the costume away. It, with it Hero has to in be it. some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on. And then then she used the camera's timer to to set up the picture. You're almost there. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. No, I don't if believe it. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? Right. What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No. There is no other explanation. 
Other explanations? If it wasn't a picture of the suspect, suspect dragging Hifumi away, the only other possibility is... Hifumi and the suspect have been drinking! Hifumi is dragging away the suspect. Hifumi and the suspect are dancing. Easy. I got it. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. Precisely. Busted. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. Yep. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. Pretty much. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. Right. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Why is that? Kukumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. What do you say? Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Ooh, girl, she's getting mad. So let's think she can prove that there's no way Fumi was dragging the suspect away. Is it really a possible answer? Well, let's see. Yes, a hero's message, robot justice blueprints. Okay, interesting. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Mm. I think it'll be then the blueprint. Then you me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. True. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight no, like that, that. No, that, that can't be it. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after all. No way! Okay, yeah, I know what it is. Okay. You dressed me up in that, then you just draped me. You tried to make me look like I said. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing if the person inside the suit was unconscious. There's no way they could stand up straight. Boom! Got that one right. <laughs> no. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Yup. Because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. It couldn't bend. You totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a, a pretty obvious oversight. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. It was more intentional. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Yup. <laughs> I agree. Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. So he could just stand upright. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. Yup. <laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh boy. Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? Uh. Celeste? Clearly, you want to cram me into your little guilty box. Well, there's one little problem. Which is? Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Hmm. Hey, Hifumi, who was it who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? Who killed me? That's right. I remember their name, Yasu Hiro. When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasu Hiro. Here's the other thing, though. We all know you're a liar, Celeste. And honestly, you're the only one that we know that doesn't have a last name. Which makes me believe that you're just using a fake name for all of this. It matches your fake personality with your fake attitude. In other words, Yasuhiro Hatakurei! Right! But my name isn't really Yasuhiro! It's actually... Taro! What? Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. True. He did say Yasuhiro. But are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are 
are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Jeez, girl. Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? Oh, he referred to everyone's last names. I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Yeah, he did. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for Same. example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. That's a weird way of pronouncing it, but okay. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Exactly. Decent? Don't talk. <laughs> Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? My thoughts exactly. No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. My thoughts exactly. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. Yep. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? Yep. But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, yep. and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Right. <laughs> What did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come <laughs> on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Jeez. Well, do I? Girl, oh my god, her, her, her face, her everything about her, like, damn. What? I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Because you're the one that did it. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? So, make sure your ear holes are wide open and <laughs> up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? I don't think that's it, though. Celeste won't give up, so then how did you say to make her accept it? Easily. Let's see. Oh, the e-handbook. Duh. They always show our names when we open them. Hifumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. That could be it. If there's one person here who might have that last name. It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Lodenberg, god damn it! <laughs> it's upside down. <laughs> How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to there go we go. me... Yeah, we do. No, it's wrong. The e-handbook. Yeah. That's it! The handbook! What?! Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Yep. Monokuma told us all about it before. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it! When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one! Now this is not your everyday notebook, it has so many more uses than that. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. Girl, you busted. That's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. <laughs> Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. It's already over. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! <laughs> oh my god. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. Let's do it. And that'll bring everything to an end. Comic book time. Alright. Oh my god, hit Foopy's face. Alright. Why is this here? Like, come on. No need for that. Alright, Act 2. Let's see you there. 
Why is this here, too? Okay. Okay, um... Yeah, one o'clock. Pictures here, and then have it at this time where Fumi kills Taka. Let's see, it's just his hammer four. So blood on that. That's it. I want to think. Let's see, because hammer number two is used on it. Oh wait, maybe. No, no, no. Hit it. Wait. I'm trying to think. I think. I think this is it. Killer is. I hope it is. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Kifumi. <laughs> that Kifumi. face. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. Alright, TikTok. When I am. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at 1 in the morning. Yep. That someone they met with was Hiro. The yep. murderous duo intended to pass Hiro off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Yep. Next, Ifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him. Yep. While the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They yep. did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. That it would. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. Yep. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. Dead. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. Yep. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. Okay, now here's the part where the I know... The reason Hammer number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crime. Alright, so after this, it's either going to be yes or no for what I pick. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. Okay, I think I did it wrong. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. Yeah. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack store. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. Yep, we gotta restart. These two incidents, <laughs> the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. Yep. 
Yep, I knew it. I I laid that out wrong. Okay, yeah, Justice Hammer 2 goes there. Three. Okay, let's try that again. Here's exactly what happened. So, for the first fake they wanted the second fake this time with the that the sea fell right. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood <laughs> packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. Yep. He let out a scream to draw us back. <laughs> and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. Yep. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. Yep. And boom. He got Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That yep. explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Yep. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. Yep. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Celeste. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> Celeste! Sorry, you lose. Game over. I lost? I lost? When was the last time I was forced to utter such words? They hang heavy around my neck. I would imagine. Then you admit it? You're the killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Oh, she's good, revealing herself. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Ooh, okay. That's a nice name. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. <laughs> At least, okay, so the act is all up. She's just talking normal now. Interesting. Well, trial's over. All right, let's see. B, okay. B, A, A. Okay. Okay, decent. That was a decent one. All right, 98 coins. Nice. Okay. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote. Okay? Okay. All right. If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? You know, as a 3D designer, like, looking at the chair that Monokuma's on, it really does give me some cringe with, with how the wood placement is. <laughs> Just saying that right now. Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Well, time to pull the lever. Monokuma vote! Uh, you know, I kind of really did like Celeste. It's just like towards the end, it's just like, okay. Yeah, you're kind of being a little much. 
What? It's basically a formality at this point, but once again, you're totally correct! The black in this time, the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was... Celestia Ludenberg, or more precisely, Taiko Yasuhiro! Honestly. I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake after all. The Fui's ineptitude was beyond all my calculations. I knew it. So you really did approach Ifumi with this plan. But how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. <laughs> I'm sure she relied on her spe specialty, lying. <laughs> my specialty? Don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. So then. Then did you use... you know. <sighs> I knew you figured it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get Hifumi to act as my accomplice, mm -hmm. I used her. For everyone who's still left, I avoid mentioning it by name, but it was the one thing Hifumi and Taco were both super into. Alter ego. Yeah, I kind of figured that had to be the big cause for this. Does she mean... Is she talking about alter ego? Say what? Why? What, what, why? What are you talking about? Just a second. Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. I'm totally out of the loop, as usual. How sad. In other words... Then you're the one who stole it. Indeed. And that's right. I see. And use it to drag Kifumi to the plan with you, you come up with. <laughs> right again. Last night, after we had our meeting about how it out disappeared, I paid Kifumi a little visit. Um... Oh my god, this is Kifumi's room? Oh, Jesus Christ. He has, like, a little pudgy whatever thing costume in his background. Of course, he be had to been the one that made the costume for sure, but it's like... Hifumi, dude. This is, again, a little weird. I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't go any further getting to know Hifumi, because I think I would have been a little scared. Oh, um, what are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping I could talk to you alone. It is about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. <laughs> what? So then... And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I had found a use for the digital camera. I had taken you know what to take... What to Taka's room earlier and took pictures of it there. I deleted the picture as soon as I showed it to Ifumi, of course. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is getting... This room, man. This room is just... Something. Damnation! Ugh, it was him! But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if either of us got to her. <sighs> you are correct, which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Say what? Ugh. As for me... Please forgive me. He... He threatened me. Oh. Um... He, he did. As for me... He came to my room last night unannounced, and then it's hard for me to even say... He abused me. What? What? <sighs> and then he... He took pictures. He said if I did not do as he acts, he would show them to everyone. So I had no choice. Damnation! Th that's a crime! An absolute crime! He... I mean, I knew he got a little crazy, but... Say what? I never imagined he would go that far! <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. <laughs> I can't express how enjoyable that was. <laughs> I'm about to say something I never said before in my life. I'm going to kill him! I'm going to f fucking kill him! Most unfortunate. Wait, please. If you go now, you'll you'll be playing right into his hands. Hmm? Huh? Actually, Taka is planning to use her to escape, and he has made you his target. What? Escape? You don't mean <sighs> Taka is going to try to kill you? <laughs> what? Indeed. And also, he can keep her to himself. <laughs> that, that bastard! <laughs> bastard! Bastard! <laughs> bastard! <laughs> bastard! <laughs> Honestly. Can we allow him to continue with these barbaric acts? <laughs> Absolutely not. How could I? Sh she I swear I will save her! I have to save her! Actually. Then would you like to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I have devised a way to reclaim that what he has stolen and escape this dreadful school. <laughs> <laughs> and with that it's complete. Hmm? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh nothing. <laughs> if Fumi agreed without a second thought, <laughs> the effect that item had on him was remarkable. The power of love, even a love as twisted as that, can still drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um, you disgust me. I see. I mean, she did what she did, man, you know. I mean, it wasn't right, but it was clever. 
to work it like that. I have another question for you. Was that strange costume Hifumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that. But it's my fault for picking him in the first place. What? So why'd you decide to make me the suspect? <sighs> because you're stupid. I mean, that's pretty good reason right there. That's it? Let's see. And in that regard, I made the right choice. I'm so glad your stupidity surpassed my every expectation. <laughs> Life must have been tough on your parents, though. Jeez. Going to hell on a high note, I see. I feel like I can cry. Well. But when you were explaining your plan to Afumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? <laughs> what was she, what, what she's asking is, what was Afumi supposed to do after that, assuming you had actually left him alive? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part and pretended to be dead, when someone showed up, I told him he'd been seriously wounded. He was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. Hmm. And he really believed it? <laughs> of course, of course. That wasn't all there was to it. As I explained to Ifumi, the plan was. While you were questioning him about what had happened, I was going to murder someone else. At that point, Ifumi would have had an alibi so nobody would, could doubt him. I told him that, and he believed it. <laughs> it all seems very straightforward, stereotypical. <laughs> I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Ifumi ate it up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you planned to kill him all along. <laughs> but of course! There would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck?! How can a human life mean so little to you?! Well... That's, n that's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! Now you sound like Biakia! I wonder about no, that. No, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are not alike. Why? Then, what made you th take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for the money? Hmm. Are you talking about the $10 million Manakuma offer us? That is a lot of money, it's true. <sighs> but that's not all there is to it. From the moment our new life here began, my only thought had been to escape. But, but all you've been saying is that we have to accept living here. You little bitch! Obviously, that was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take it. I hated it from day one. More than anyone, anyone, anyone else is in here. You little bitch. I wanted to get out. Every day was fresh torture. And do you want to know why, huh? This is fine. Because I had a dream. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. And there was no way that I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical killing. As for me... And it was all for that dream. And what was that dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. A, a castle? Well, you definitely dressed like you would. Oh, okay. <laughs> and to gather han handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butlers slash bodyguards. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Wow. She definitely has some uh, interesting goals in mind. <laughs> Once I obtained that, I would have created a perfectly aesthetic world of de 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 I don't know. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there was my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. <sighs> Combined with uh, my own winnings, Manakuma's $10 million would have made the dream a reality. I got right to the edge, but... There is nothing to be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered to the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream till the very end, so why would I? Just the worst. You sound so passionate, but you were really able to kill your own friends for it? Oh. Are you asking me to feel guilty? That's a pointless endeavor. I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? That... That's we should be saying, and plus, how can you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why aren't you scared? <laughs> <laughs> My ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. It's not just other people, I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious. And that's why you're not scared? Yes, indeed. That's right, I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. Man, it's lust, like... It's like, I don't like you, and I like you at the same time. It's it's weird. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated, if I had a choice, then... Isn't it wonderful? I think I would come back as Marie Antoinette. What, so you could die again? Hey. 
you just get executed again. Thank you, hero. It's like, <laughs> it's like you just want to die. Like, come on. <laughs> Celeste smiled then. When she did, it looked to me like a poor effort to force it. Oh, she is scared. Oh, she's just trying to put on a good show for everyone else. She claims she could fool her own feelings, but that statement itself, it must have been her final lie. And that weak, fake smile is what betrayed her. Kills, chills, kills. You all done? Okay, then let's get rolling. The flag can disturb the peace and must pay the price. Now then, now I then. prepared a very special punishment. For her, the ultimate gambler. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I really wonder what it's going to be, I guess honestly. I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. Hello. What? This is... Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why... Actually, it's not important. Well then... Take care, everyone. Oh, that's one way Perhaps to leave. we'll meet again. In another life. Oh, well, that's one way to put it. Hmm. I really wonder how they're gonna kill her. Game over. Celeste has been found guilty. Time for the punishments. Alright, let's see what it is. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. <gasps> oh no, are they gonna burn her alive? <gasps> oh god! Oh, this is gonna be brutal. The burning of the Versailles Witch. Oh god. That's one way to go. Oof. <laughs> Being burnt alive, that's... Ugh. I would not want that on anyone. Ugh. God. That has a way to go out. I mean, really. Ugh. Poor Celeste. I mean, she did to herself, but still. Like, ugh. That's a way to go. Hopefully, maybe, maybe the, you know, the fumes and stuff will knock her out before she gets burned, but, oh, that, that's just, oh. <gasps> Wait, what? That, that, that's not gonna get there. Wait, <gasps> is it gonna run into her? What? Wait, what? Oh my god, this is overkill right here. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, what killed her first? The flames or the truck? Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, you put out the fire. Aren't you special? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man, that's a way to go out. Oof. <laughs> It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friend, so I can't pity her, but... I also can't deny that at one point I considered her a friend, too. And for him to just come along and... <sighs> Isn't it just awful? Someone could cut free of their regrets from the outside world, and so more people had to die. Extreme! You guys are still young. You need to place more value on your lives. What are you gonna do? Jeez, and here I thought you guys were gonna pass the torch of hope to the next generation. <laughs> Let me out of here! What can I do, do or care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you let me out of here. Too bad. You're all the embodiment of hope, whether you like it or not. And it's my destiny to knock you down one by one. It's sad, yeah it is, but that's reality. Just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm so sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. Hmm. So, anyway. Kyoko, did I see you get some kind of key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey. So, uh, what's the deal with that? Wah -wah? Huh? What's the matter? So then... I'll answer your question, if you answer mine. You... What did you do? What did you do to me? Ooh. What? Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, man. oh man. Oh jeez. Oh man. Oh jeez. What do you mean? What did I do? I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. Um... What was that just now? Master Matt did say to Kyoko's body? What does that mean? Hello. Okay, these are getting kind of awkward. I think it's about time I get out, got out of here. Well? Be 
Meanwhile, you guys can go enjoy your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya later! See ya! <laughs> Monokuma would disappear, leaving us all depressed and in despair. Although it wasn't all despair. There was one small hope. Hey, Kyoko, Monokuma already mentioned it, but... What's that Kia Celeste so... gave you? Most likely, it's the key to the one in the dressing room lockers. Huh? What then that means? Hmm. Celeste probably hid it in there. Yeah, it's probably... Oh, okay, so for Alter Ego, probably. Hey! I suppose sometimes it's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well then, we better get go check. Indeed. Good idea. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. Alright. I'm gonna leave this here, people. Um... That was an interesting case. I mean, I kind of figured it was Celeste, like, really good in the beginning of it, but, man, that's a way to go out. Oof. But, uh, hope you liked the video, guys, and, uh, hopefully the next one, like I said before, hopefully your favorites are still sticking around and still sticking out to the very end. So, in the meantime, guys, I'll be seeing you later.